Hi guys, this is John Anderson with Ragdoll Studios. I'm creating a different sort of tutorial today that focuses on medical and scientific animation. We'll be creating a lipid bilayer, which is the thin protective membrane around the cells in our bodies. These membranes are, as the name implies, dual layers of lipids that each consist of a head and two tails. Um, the two layers will be opposing one another, and we'll see that in just a little bit. Uh, we'll demonstrate a simplified but widely accepted appearance for these lip lipid bilayers. We'll also build the protein channels that allow selective passage of molecules through the cell membrane. Some of the tools you'll be learning today are the Wave Space Warp, and there's a useful script that we'll grab from ScriptSpot called Random Transform Offset. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so to begin, we're going to go ahead and... Um, I'm just going to maximize my viewport. I'll go to my front view by hitting F and then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this grid because I don't like seeing it. <clears throat> Alright, so what we're going to do is go to our create panel which will be this little plus sign up here on the upper right and if you hover over it, it will say create. And then we want to make sure that geometry is selected and standard primitives is selected. And underneath you should see sphere. So we'll grab that and we'll just drag that out in the viewport. <clears throat> okay, we also want to drag out a oil tank. So to there's no oil tank primitive in the standard primitives. We have to actually change this drop down to extended pr primitives. And then we'll see oil tank right here. So you'll click and drag that out. <clears throat> now the oil tank, when you drag it out, you're going to click drag, release, drag again, and then click again, and then drag one more time. And that last drag is going to change the size or the shape of the, um, the ends of this oil tank. You don't have to worry about it because you're not really going to be able to see what that looks like yet. So just click and, uh, click and release. And then we'll go ahead and we'll um, rotate. We'll select and rotate this on the Y direction and we want to rotate it straight down. Now, whenever you rotate, I find it really tedious trying to get um, trying to get the exact rotation that I'm looking for. So generally speaking, when you rotate, it's a good idea to turn on angle snaps toggle. And that way, you'll snap by fives, and it'll be much easier to get your rotation that you're looking for. OK, so as far as the, the parameters for the oil tank, um, if we go up into the Modify panel, up here in the upper right, and then we look at our different parameters. So the radius changes how thick or thin the oil tank is. Okay. The height is pretty obvious. And the reason why we want the pivot to be at the top is because we want that height to extend downward. Okay. And then the cap height. So that's what this is right here. You'll adjust this, and that will um, that'll adjust the shape. And we want something that's pretty rounded anyway. Okay, so before we place this object, we're going to go ahead and rotate. Remember to turn on your angle snaps toggle. We're going to rotate this sphere in the y direction so that those two poles are facing top and um, top and bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag the tail over and place it like so <clears throat> excuse me alright so let's talk about the parameters that we've chosen so far so for the sphere I'm gonna do 25 for my radius and for my segments I actually want this to be a fairly low segmented uh, sphere because we're gonna have a lot of these duplicated in our scene and we just don't want that um, that much geometry. So I'm going to set the segments to I'll st start with 12. And I think that that'll be good. <clears throat> and as far as the tail goes, I'll set the radius to 5. Um, the height I'll set to 50. Actually, I'm going to go a little higher. I'll set the height to 60 so we get a kind of you know fairly long tail there. And then the cap segments will just, oops, you'll just increase until it's at maximum. 
Okay, so for this it'll be 4.95. I'll hit F3 so I can see what's going on in here, and that looks pretty good. This sphere is going to look chunky. That's okay. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of, um, we're going to be adding a lot of geometry to this, um, this lipid bilayer. So we want to make sure that our geometry is fairly low um, in our creation. So again, in this oil tank, to bring out, bring that geometry down a little bit lower, I'm going to change my sides to eight. And my height segments I'll set to three. Okay. And that should look like that. Actually, I'm going to set my height segments to four. Okay. All right, that's looking pretty good. So what I want to do now is I want to add a bend modifier. So I'll go up to the modifier list and I'll click that arrow right next to it. And I'll select bend. And then I'm going to change the angle for my bend so that it bends outward. We'll do minus 30. And then I'm going to add another bend modifier. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and change the gizmo for the bend modifier. So I'm just going to make an adjustment there. So next to that modifier, you have this little triangle that expands the, uh, the bend modifier. And then I want to select gizmo. And I want to drag this gizmo straight down. So I'm just going to drag it down to about that first segment, the first horizontal segment. And then I'm going to change my angle and I'm going to bend this back inward, like so. Um, but I don't want to bend the top, so I'm going to click limit effect. And it's going to, that's fine, it's going to jump all around. Um, as soon as I click limit effect, it'll do that. And then I'll change the upper limit. I'll just adjust that and you'll see it'll start to go back into place. Okay. Now it's bent, it's bent too far, so I'm just going to adjust my angle. So I'll set this to 20. That's not enough. So let's try 40. And that's better. Now we can do a few things. We can uh, move this gizmo down a little bit more. I think that that's not bad. And then change this angle to 60. I think that that looks pretty good. So I set this gizmo so that the top of the gizmo is setting right across that horizontal, the second horizontal segment. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click and convert this to an editable poly. And then I want to mirror the um, this tail across in the X direction. So I'll click mirror. And I want to make sure it's a, a, uh, a copy. Hit OK. And then there's, just drag this over so that it looks like that. All right, so we have the lipid head and the two lipid tails. And that's what we're going for. All right, so I'm going to right click and convert to edible poly on the head. <clears throat> and then in my modify panel, I'll go down and I'll click attach. And I'll just click the two tails. And that creates, um, it merges them all into one object with three separate elements. You can see the three separate elements, but it is one object. And that is the start of our lipid bilayer. So <clears throat> the lipid bilayer is two opposing um, layers. So what we're going to do is we want to take this lipid here. You want to hold down shift and rotate in the Y direction and rotate this 180 degrees. Okay. All right. And you want to release and then click instance and hit OK. And then you want to just drag this bilayer, this uh, second lipid down. So we have two opposing lipids. Okay, and now what we're going to do is you could use a ray for this. I'm not going to use a ray. I'm just going to go ahead and do this manually. Um, but you're going to grab both of these lipids 
and you're going to hold down shift and drag so that they're just touching each other and release and that's going to bring up our clone options box and we want to make sure that these are all instances that's going to help us with our with our memory in our system um, and we want to duplicate this let's just do 40 times okay so we get that now you can kind of see we're starting to add a lot of geometry we're about to add an awful lot more um, so there is the f first row of our lipid bilayers um, but this is a, a continuous membrane um, we're not going to be able to obviously create a continuous membrane in 3ds um, in, in 3d but we're going to try to create something that we can fake a continuous uh, membrane so I'll select all of these lipids and then I'll hit T for top and Z for zoom get rid of that grid by hitting G and whenever you have a gizmo um, you have the the three different directions for your transform um, so here we can see from the top down view you're only gonna see two because we can't see that Z the um, Z direction so all we can see is the X and the Y um, but this little box um, between the two that spans the two allows you to click and drag so that you're moving in any direction if you just click, click on the arrow you're gonna drag in that um, that direction that the arrow is pointing but this box in the center allows you to drag in any, any direction so horizontally anyway so I'm gonna hold down shift and click in that box and drag and then I'm going to align these so that they're offset and kind of centered on the first um, the first row so and I'm gonna kind of overlap these a little bit like that and I'll click instance hit F3 so we can see what's going on alright and so now we have those two rows I'll hit T and I'm going to select all of these again and this time I'm just going to hold down shift and drag in the Y direction I'll align those so that they're touching just slightly overlapped I'll release and we're going to make 20 copy uh, 20 instances of this it's going to take a second to um, to populate and then what we're going to do is when we actually are render our animation, we're going to render fairly close up like this so that you can't really see that we don't have a continuous membrane or hopefully we won't see that. Okay, these are all instances. I can see some um, some smoothing group problems in here so I'm just gonna go ahead and click one of these I'll add a smooth modifier I'll auto smooth this and I'll set the threshold to 180 that should smooth get rid of all those smoothing problems and then we don't want to right click and convert to edible poly because that will break the instance to collapse this we want to right click where it says smooth right click and collapse to and that will preserve the instance I'm going to do that again so you can see where it says smooth right click collapse to and then here you'll get a warning um, that it's removing a portion of the modifier stack um, you'll just hit yes okay now this is going to chug your system um, and when you move in and out you could get those boxes um, that are for the adaptive degradation uh, we can turn off adaptive degradation by coming down here to adaptive degradation and clicking that box and as long as that's not blue it's turned off if it is chugging your system a lot and you don't mind seeing the boxes go ahead and leave that on it'll help your system the lipid bilayer tends to not be quite well it's not as uniform as this so this is very mechanical and uniform looking 
Um, so I want to offset this a little bit. Um, I could come in here and offset each of these by hand and that would be a nightmare for all of these objects. We currently have how many objects do we have selected? Let's go to here, configure viewport, statistics, total plus selection, show in the viewport, hit apply, and you can see we have 34, 44, 3,444 objects here. Um, so I wouldn't want to have to do that all by hand. So if you go to script spot, we have um, a pretty neat little um, script here that you can download. It's going to come in as a .ms. Just click the top one um, and that will come in as a .ms. So, and then what you're going to do is navigate to the folder that you downloaded that to and you'll have that random transform v1 in your folder. All you're going to do with that .ms file is click and drag that into the viewport, the viewport and it's going to bring up this dialog box. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is select all of my um, all of my lipids except for the front layer. So I'll hit Alt and deselect that front layer. I want to leave that one fairly consistent, but the other ones I want to kind of offset a little bit so it's not as mechanical looking. And to do that, we're only going to offset it in the X and Y directions. So I'll click three, uh, negative three for minimum. Oops. Negative three for my minimum X position and three for my max X position. And I'll do the same thing for my Y positions, negative three and three. And then I'm just going to come down here and I'm going to hit apply. And that should shift these around a little bit. Not as much as I'd like, so I'm going to hit apply again. And just a few times, I'll keep hitting apply until this doesn't look as uniform. So I think I've hit apply about 10 different times now. And then I'll close that and you'll see that now we have something that doesn't look terribly uniform. So this is really good. I like this and I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. And I clicked out of the random transform offset. So go ahead and do that. It's a pretty neat little script. And it's going to help add a lot of variability or variation in your lipid bilayer. That's good. So what we're going to do now is we want to bring in a wave um, space warp. So what you're going to do is go to your top panel. And you're going to go up to where it says uh, create. Go down to space warps. Geometric deformable. And select wave. Now the wave you're going to click and drag that out in your viewport and that's going to drag out the size basically the scale or the length of the wave and then you're going to release and you're going to drag again and it's going to change the amplitude of the wave we want that amplitude to be fairly low so I'm just going to it's going to go to 4.25 225 I'm just going to click again and complete that wave I think that that's fine for now. The other thing that we want to do is we want the wave to be horizontal. So basically this direction. And right now it's facing that direction. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate it so that the wave is horizontal. I'll hit G to get rid of that grid again. Okay. So then I'm going to select all of my lipid bilayer and I'll come up to the left hand side um, menu up here and select bind to space warp and I'll click anywhere on the lipid bilayer and I'll drag and link everything to my wave. And it could take you a minute or so to resolve that 
but now you can see that it has applied a wave to our lipid bilayer. All right, and that looks pretty good. Now we can adjust the parameters for this wave by clicking on the wave, going to the modify panel, and messing with these parameters. So if I did a five for my amplitude one, you can see it's gonna be pretty wavy. I don't really want that, so I'll do like a 4.5 and see how that looks. That's better. We don't want a overpowering wave, we just want something that's subtle. Um, these do exist in fluid, so you're going to have something that is, it's going to have a wavy motion, um, so having that is going to look pretty good. All right, so then the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and um, change our timeline from 0 to 100, and we'll do that 0 to 300. So click the little um, clock down here with the little gear. That's your, that's your uh, time configuration. And then we're going to set our, an, our animation end time to 300. And click uh, hit enter and hit OK. So then I want to go to frame 300. And I want to change my phase. Let's set this phase to, um, let's do 5 for our phase. Okay, and then we want to make sure that we don't have any ease in and ease out on that phase. So I'm going to right click on that key that I just created, choose phase, and set these to linear. This is the linear option right here. You don't really have to change the out, but I usually do anyway. And then we're going to do that same thing on frame zero. Set it to linear. Okay. And that way the wave will stay consistent throughout the entire animation. So if we test this, you can see that it's, it's working. All right. And then if I do a viewport sequence, Okay, so we're back, um, and the preview animation has completed. So if we take a look at that, you'll cons you'll see that there's a, a pretty uniform wave in our lipid bilayer. So the one thing that I don't like um, about this look right here is that it's very uniform. And if you've ever seen microscopic um, visualization, uh, if you ever looked at something under the microscope, there tends to be kind of a vibration. Um, and I, I want to kind of replicate that. So what I'm going to do is clear that. I'll go to my top view by hitting T. I'm going to select all of my lipid bilayer. And then I'm going to bring back that, rap, that uh, random transform by just dragging the file into the viewport. And then I'm gonna set my position again to minus three and three, minus three and three, and then minus one and one. So I know we didn't do the Z direction last time, but this time I wanna get a little bit of vibration in the Z direction. All right, so I'm gonna set my um, timeline to zero. And I'm gonna create a key by going down to the scrubber, right clicking, and just setting a position key, hit OK. And then I'm gonna go to frame five, and I'm gonna turn on auto key, and this time I'm gonna use this random transform. Um, I'm gonna use it to key a new keyframe, so a new position for each one of these. So what I'll do is frame five, come over here. I've already set all my parameters. I'm going to click apply. I'm going to go to frame 10. Do it again. Apply. Then I'm going to go to frame 15. I'm going to hit apply. And then I'm going to close this. Okay. So now you can see down here in the left on the, uh, in the timeline, we have four, um, four different keys.
set up for each one of these. Okay, so then what I need to do is if I was to isolate just one of these lipids and take a look at it, I'm going to turn off the wave binding so we can kind of see what's happening. We have a bit of an animation here, but it stops and then there's nothing. Okay? So what we want to do is we want to continue this so it goes throughout the entire um, timeline. And we're going to do that with something called out of range types. So I'll turn off auto key, turn my wave binding back on, and then I'm going to end isolate. Okay, I'll select all of my lipid bilayer. And then I'm going to open up my curve editor. <clears throat> all right, and then once we have all of the um, all the curves updated, you're going to go down up to uh, edit controller, and then select out of range types. And here are the the different out of range types that we can use. We have constant, which is just what we what we originally had, right? It goes through the keys and then just stops. Once there's no keyframe, it just stops. And then we have cycle. Cycle will play through the keyframes and then stop and go back to frame one, uh, frame zero, and then play again. And it'll continue to do that perpetually. Uh, loop is going to be, um, it plays through the keyframes and then loops around and does it again. Um, ping pong is what we're going to use. It plays through the keyframes and then it plays in reverse and then plays forward and then in reverse. Um, I've never actually used linear and relative repeat um, basically where it stops, where the, uh, the position stops, it'll start a new set of keyframes at that, um, at that position. So what ends up happening is all of these lipid bilayer, they would just kind of all kind of come apart. So we don't want that. So we're going to choose ping pong. We'll hit OK. Close our curve editor. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and um, create another animation preview. And I realized last time that I did the animation preview, I didn't really uh, do a good job of showing how to do an animation preview. So what I'll do is I'll go through those steps again, and then I'll stop the video um, and wait for it to, to complete. Okay, so to start an animation preview, you're going to go up to Tools, go down to uh, View Preview, Grab Viewport, Create Preview Animation, and then we're going to set, I'll just set a custom file for this one, call this Lipid Bilayer 2. and I'll hit create. It'll probably take about 10 minutes to get through this, um, but hopefully in the end what we're going to see is we have the nice uniform waves, but then we're also going to get this kind of jittery nature from each one of the each one of the lipids. Um, and it will look much more, it'll have that kind of um, jittery vibration that you see anytime you look at anytime that you look at something under the microscope you're going to see that jittery vibration so hopefully that's what we're going to get all right so the animation preview has finished and we have our preview here so i'll hit play and now you can see that there's a slight jitteriness to each one of these uh, lipids and that's what we we're going for. So, play it one more time through. You can see that they're each moving independently of the wave. So, that looks good. Very cool. Alright, so the next thing that we're going to do is... Um, that all looks fine. But we want to add the, um, the protein channels. So, what we're going to do for the protein channel is we're going to go to our top view. We're going to create a cylinder. Okay. And we want this cylinder to be roughly the side the uh, height. Hold on a 
a second. Let's move this to the front so we can see it. Roughly the height of the, um, the lipid bilayer, just a little bit more. So I will bring this up like so, increase my radius like so. Okay. And then I'm going to turn on my cap segments. We want this to have five separate segments. So I'm going to set my sides to uh, 10. And then what we're going to do is just break this apart. So I'm going to right click and collapse into an editable poly. And I'm going to delete each one of these sides. So we're only left with that piece right there. Missed part of it, so I'll get rid of this as well. And then I'm going to bridge this across, so I'll grab these sides here, these edges. And then I'll grab these edges down here. Make sure you have edge mode, ed, edge sub-object mode turned on. And then we're going to bridge across. And then I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these other edges here. Control, backspace to delete those. I'm going to isolate this so we can see it. Okay. And then make sure that we don't have any open um, areas. So I'm going to select border, highlight across. We see we have two places where we have open borders. So I will convert this by holding down control and clicking on vertex and welding. And hopefully that fixes it. It didn't. So. So, not too hard of a fix. So what I'll do is I'll grab these two edges, these two faces here, delete those, grab these edges up here and these two down here and bridge those across and that should fix it. So we have no more open edges. Perfect. All right, and we really don't need this one either. So I'll get rid of that. And then what we're going to do is grab this whole edge here and we're going to chamfer this. Like so. And then we're going to give ourselves some cross connects by selecting a crossed the edges here all the way around. You could also just click on one edge and then click ring, connect, ac uh, connect across, and then give ourselves, we only really need two, but we need to bring them up like this. Okay. Actually, then I'll do this again. This time I'll just make it even and give it a few more. So, all right, so hopefully what we're going to do now is just um, see if we add a relax, see what that does. That's not really going to do it. So what I'll do is delete the relax and add a turbo smooth. Modifiers, subdivision surface, turbo smooth. All right, so that's not bad. Probably do one more. And then collapse this. All right, then what we're going to do is turn on our angle snaps toggle. Hold down shift. And we're just going to duplicate this at 75. We're going to make five, uh, four copies, sorry, instances. Oop. And that was off, so I'm going to control Z, see how it penetrated there? Control Z, and I'll do it 70. Oh, it's still off. All right, now I have to actually think about this. So 360 divided by 5, 72 is what we want. 
So what we can do is right click on our angle snaps and set our snap um, our snap angle to two. Actually, we could set it to 72. Yeah, let's do that. We'll set it to 72 and then hold down shift and drag once. And it'll automatically set snap to 72 and then we want five instances, uh, four instances. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Okay. And then I don't need all of this extra geometry. So what I'm going to do is um, take this ring and hold down control and bring this ring down like this and then um, do the same thing you hitting the down arrow over here control and it will bring the rings up and then I'm going to control backspace to get rid of them we don't need that many and then I'm going to give one connection right in the center and I'm just going to shift this in like this Oops. So that we get a little bit of a curve there. Probably even go a little more. Okay, and then I'll chamfer this. So I gave it a 50 chamfer with two um, setting here of two. Click the checkbox. So that gives us our protein um, alright that's the structure that we're looking for. So, protein channel, that's what I was trying to think of. All right, so a couple other things we could do. At this point, we could try to relax this a little bit. It's a little flat on top, so if we relax this, maybe we can get it to not be quite as flat. That looks pretty decent. And then I have a smoothing error here, so I'll add a smooth modifier on top of this. Auto smooth, 180, and that's better. Convert this to an edible, uh, actually before we do that, let's bring all of these in. So what I'll do is add an edit poly on top of this. Where's my edit poly? Grab the whole thing top view and just shift these in a little bit so that they're all kind of touching. All right. All right, there's our protein channel. So the idea is that this um, will expand and allow um, molecules to come through here. I'm going to end isolate and then I'm going to go ahead and collapse one of these and attach all the others. Attach, 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 attach. And then we're going to just place it inside of our, our uh, lipid bilayer. We can place a few of these as instances. Okay, and then we'll grab all of the protein channels. Here. And then we're going to bind to space warp so that they move with the lipid bilayer. And 
now you can see they're moving with the lipid bilayer so that's good that's what we want okay so that motion looked pretty good so the next thing that we're gonna do is add some materials to our lipid bilayer alright so to do that what we have to do is I want the lipids to have two separate colors so I want the top the uh, the lipid head to have a bluish color and then I want the tails to have a peachish or a tan color so I'm going to go ahead and back up into my editor poly so over in the modify panel underneath wave bind binding we're going to select editable poly then we're going to select our element and we're going to just go ahead and select the head and make sure that the head is set to uh, ID channel 1 so if you scroll down in your modify panel all the way down to polygon material IDs um, this will allow us to have two separate materials on the same object so I'm going to set ID to 1 and then I'm going to hit control I <clears throat> to switch to the tails and I'm going to set this ID channel to 2 okay and because everything is instanced that should carry through to all of our um, all of our uh, lipids alright so I'm going to get out of this I'm going to close the sub object by clicking in the blue and then I will just close this and then I'm going to hit M for material editor bring that over here and then I'm going to <coughs> excuse me I'm going to assign a new material sub-object or multi sub-object so I'll grab the first material ball I'll call this lipid multi sub <coughs> hit enter change from a standard material to a oh, where are you? multi sub-object material discard old material good um, and then we're going to go ahead and click where it says none here in material ID channel 1 you'll remember we said that that was going to be a blue so I'll click there I'll give that a standard material where are you? okay and then I want to show you so the type of material that we're going to give this is a fall off and the fall off basically for medical animation stems from a um, scanning electron microscope uh, image so an SEM cell so I'll bring that over here and what you're going to notice is that all of these have kind of a similar look you're going to get an area where there's um, where it falls off to a lighter um, a lighter area at the edges and then the ed the parts that are facing you are, tend to be darker so that's a fall off effect and for 3ds max that's a perpendicular fall off effect there you go you can see it there and it's this is a fairly common thing that you'll see in almost all SEM photos um, unless they're highly colored um, naturally they should look like this all right. <clears throat> so to give this a fall off, I'm going to go down into maps, and then I'm going to change my diffuse map. I'm going to click this little check mark here, go over to where it says none, click that, and then I'm going to select fall off here at the very top, right there. Double click it, and then that's going to bring this up. So what you're going to have is the two different colors and then you're going to have a curve that shows you how this falls off right now it's a linear fall off okay so it basically is going to blend between the white and the black linearly uh, linearly and you can see that if we double click on our, our material ball you can see that fall off from um, black to white okay but we want this to be blue so I'm going to go ahead and select the black, um, the top fall off, so where it's black, and we're going to set our um, our RGB to 150, 
and then 170 and then 255 <clears throat> and hit OK and we'll duplicate that down into the white channel as a copy and then we'll go into that white channel and we'll just make it a little bit lighter and I'll go back into the blue and make it a little darker okay so we get something like that and then in the mix curve, I don't want it to be just a very even gradation. I want it to actually be darker and then fall off a little more rapidly. So what I'll do is add a point right here. You can see that little green plus. If you click that and then you click on this line anywhere, you're going to get a point. And that will allow us to shift that fall off. Okay. So, but this is a... <clears throat> um, we want to use a Bezier fall off <coughs> or a Bezier curve. <clears throat> so I'm going to right click on that point and change it to Bezier smooth. And then I'm just going to adjust this so I get a slight S curve and shift it a little bit to the left. Now you can see that there's a much stronger fall off here. And there's, there's almost a defined edge to the between the blue and the light blue. Okay, so that looks fine to me. I do want to also have some self-illumination in here. So that is essentially, it's illuminated with or without light um, that the areas that are that we want will be illuminated. So uh, it will duplicate this down to self-illumination self as a copy, make sure it's a copy. And then you can see it gets a full illumination up here. So I'm going to set the bottom to white and the top to black. All right. <clears throat> and what you see is that the outside is illuminated and the inside isn't. Um, and it follows that same S-curve fall off. So what I want to do now is I don't want this to be perfectly illuminated on the outside. So I'm going to set my self-illumination percentage to 50. Okay, so it will get some illumination, 50% illumination at the edges, but it won't be 100%. So you'll still get some shadow in that area. All right, so, and then I want to copy this material down into my material ID channel number two as a copy. Make sure it's a copy and not an instance because we're going to be making changes. Hit OK and then we'll go into that material 12 and I should have named the previous material um, but I'm going to call this one tan. Tan fall off and I'll call the top one blue fall off. All right, so what we're going to do is change the diffuse color only. We'll change the top one to a, um, a tan color. So that'll be 190, 150, and 115. Hit OK. Copy this down to the lower channel or the lower fall off as a copy. And then go in and drag this down so we get... A, uh, a lighter color. <clears throat> okay. Now there we have it. We have our multi sub object. So what we need to do now is I'm going to apply this to my lipid. See how it looks. And right now we are on standard. I don't know if we'll actually see this in the viewport, but let me check. All right, we do. So when you go into the material, if you click this show, uh, show shaded in viewport, that should allow you to see it. And you'll have to do it on each of the multi subs. <clears throat> All right, so that's good. And then we're going to end isolate here. And I'm going to select all of my. Right now you can't see them because it's 
the system doesn't like this so it's basically saying hey you can't see me but all right so what I'm gonna do now is apply this to all of those so I'm gonna hit H to bring up my select from scene and I will type in S P H E R E sphere hit OK and that should select everything and then I'll just click the apply to selection and it should apply it to all of those we have a lot of geometry in the scene so you know as we get further and further into the scene uh, we're gonna have a lot more lag in our uh, whenever we try to make changes And I probably will turn off the show um, show in viewport, turn off the high quality, and just go back to a lower uh, lower quality. But I was hoping that we would be a little better off than this. So we had a bit of a uh, a problem there, um, where the uh, the screen froze up. I guess because of showing so many falloffs in the viewport. Um, so what I've done is go ahead, I've gone ahead and changed our viewport mode to DX mode, which is diagnosis mode. Should be a little bit better for us. And then kept my uh, shading at the default shading, and then turned off show show uh, shaded material in viewport for both of these. Okay. So, but we can do a quick test render. And you'll see that we actually do have the shading applied. All right, so that's what we're looking for. So what we're going to do now is apply a uh, a red fall off to the protein channels. So I will copy one of my fall off materials, and I'll apply that to a new material ball as a as a copy. And then we're going to make this one red. And for red, we're just going to do a, it's not going to be solid red. It'll be slightly purplish pink. So 255, 40, 90. Okay, hit OK. I did that. I just realized I did that off the screen. So... RGB 255, 40, and 90. Hit OK. Copy that down to the bottom channel as a copy. Make this a little lighter. Hit OK. And then we're going to select all of our all of our um, protein channels. So hit H. Type in CYL for cylinder. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and assign the materials to the selection. I'll call this protein channel. And that looks pretty good. All right, so if I hit render, we should see that those have a... I'm actually going to cancel this. I'm going to change my render settings. So render, render setup. And then I'll change this to 800 by 600 so that we have something that's actually 640 by 480 so we can see this a little quicker. Okay, not too bad. <clears throat> so a couple other things that I want to do is we're going to add a few other um, a few other pieces to this. So I'm going to grab a sphere create panel grab a sphere and I'm gonna click auto grid so that it when I create it it's created exactly where I have my gizmo it'll basically auto grid it it'll allow you to create it on the surface of another object so I'm just gonna drag that out right there and I'm gonna push it down and embed it a little more and then I will oop, hold down shift drag this over here I should have done an instance, but that's okay. And then I'll drag this over here. And that's pretty good. 
I'm going to isolate one of these. Go to my front uh, front side by hitting F. I will um, click a, a click spheres a sphere. I'm going to create a new one. Sorry, I was trying to think if whether whether or not I was actually going to just duplicate this or create a new one, but I'm just going to create a new one. So I'll give that a radius of 20, and then I'm just going to shift and drag this up. And I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna give it eight copies. Okay, and then I want to go ahead and offset these a little bit so that it doesn't look like that it's just one straight pole. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit L for left and do the same thing in the left view so that it's offset in each direction. All right, so we have some kind of an offset there. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and shift and drag this as a copy, make my radius a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to shift and drag this a couple times to make a little branch. And then up here, I'll do the same thing on this one. Create a little branch there with just two. <clears throat> and then we'll offset these as well. All right, so we have something that looks like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and right click and convert the bottom one to an editable poly. And I'm going to attach the other spheres that I just made in that little tree. <clears throat> And then I'm going to end isolate and I'm going to drag this into place over one of our pink spheres there. And this is a little tall, a little big. So I'm going to uniform scale this so it's much smaller. So I basically I did a uniform scale of approximately, that's about 64% of what it was. I'm just going to place that there. Hit T for top. Make sure it's centered. Shift and drag this to the other balls. I should be instancing these, but I might want to uh, make a change to their shape, so I'm not going to worry about it right now. Um, they're just copies. That's oh, actually. I'm going to delete these because I do know I want to make it. I want to put a noise on them too. So I will make these an instance. Shift and drag. This time changing it from copy to instance. And then I'm going to rotate these so that they're not all exactly the same orientation from our camera view. So you can see they each have a slightly different orientation. <clears throat> okay, and so I'm going to go ahead and isolate one of these, P, Z for zoom, and then I'm going to add a noise modifier. Oops, it happens to me once in a while. So add a noise modifier, and then for the noise modifier, I'll give this a, let's just say, 2, 2, and 2. See how that looks. Click animate noise. It's not enough. Let's try four, four, and four. So I could see that it looks like it might be waving in like a liquid environment, which is what we're going for. Let's just do a little higher, six, six, and we'll leave Z at three because we don't want it coming off the base too much. It should be kind of fixed in place. And you can see it speeds up and then it'll slow back down at the end. That's because we have an ease on each of these keyframes. So click on the keyframe and then you're going to go to phase. 
and you're going to uh, click phase and then set these to linear close that out right click on this keyframe phase set that to linear the phase is the, uh, notice that we what's animated in our timeline is the phase right there so as I scrub you can see it's changing that's why we're changing the phase keyframe and adjusting it to linear so now when I play this you'll see that it's constant motion throughout the entire scene doesn't need to be a lot just uh, something to add some believability right click and isolate and now because these were instances they all should have a noise all right Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make these spheres. Actually, first we have to bind all of these to our space warp. So I'm going to select all of these. Hit P for perspective. And then I'm going to go ahead and bind to space warp. And now, from our camera view, the whole thing should move together which is good that's what we want alright very good so I want to give the base spheres a pinkish color so I'm gonna hit M bring up my material editor I'm gonna copy this red material over into a new material ball and then I'm going to use um, a pinker color here so I'll click in the top color and I'll set this one to 255, 30, and 145. Hit OK. And then copy this down and then make it lighter. Go ahead and apply that by apply to selection. And those will get that pink color. And then for these we want to make it a slight these a slight green. So I'll do the same thing. I will drag this out. I'll just right click here, copy, paste. And then in this material, I'm going to change the fall off to a green. So the top one will be um, 35, 230, 180. Hit OK. Copy this down as a copy and then make this lighter okay and then we're gonna select all of these little trees and we're gonna assign to selection make sure you have them all selected oh, I'm select I was hitting shift and not control alright so they're also assigned to selection so if we test render this now looking pretty good it's pretty blown out but that's because we don't have any shadows or anything in our scene so we're gonna go ahead and add that now alright so for lighting I generally will start out with image based lighting so in order to do that you're just gonna grab a go to my top view go to lighting so right there little light bulb change the selection from photometric to standard and select skylight and just drop a skylight in your scene okay and unlike normal lights in 3ds max um, skylight doesn't it doesn't matter which way it's oriented it can just be wherever um, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a spherical map to our entire scene and then the objects in our scene will get the lighting from that map um, so I've selected a, um, a map that I like, but you can go online and look up any HDR, HDRI image. Um, this one I, I happen to like. So what I'm going to do is go into my modify panel and where it says um, map, sky color map, click where it says none, select bitmap, navigate to your map location. 
hit open and now it's applied I believe that's it yes um, it's applied to the skylight but <clears throat> if we open up our material editor grab our skylight and drag the um, that image into one of our material balls as an instance you'll see that it's set to texture explicit map channel so that we don't want that we want it to be set to environment and with this setting right here it's going to apply it to the background um, as just a flat background um, on your screen we want it to wrap around the entire scene so we'll change from screen to spherical environment and that will wrap it around the entire screen so now when we do a test render we should have some more some new shading in our scene it's probably going to look a little a little dark um, and that's okay so skylight is really good for giving you some um, basically some AO some ambient occlusion um, and a much a much better overall feel for your scene um, than just adding a you, when you add individual lights you really have to adjust the lights and make sure that um, you have enough lighting in the scene so different areas aren't too black or too dark and some areas aren't too blown out so this is a good start to fixing that okay that's fine I'm not gonna let it go <clears throat> so skylights are gonna add some render time as well <clears throat> so I'll go to my top view and I'm gonna grab a target spotlight and then we drag the light straight up um, and if we look at our settings I want to turn on shadows and then I want to uh, turn on mental ray shadow map and then here I want to turn on uh, I want to go down to mental ray shadow map and I want to change this to 2048 and then for the samples I want them to be 24 and I will choose shadow parameters and set this to 0.5 I'll also give the shadows a slight blue okay and then make sure that I, I did this ahead of time and I, uh, I'm sure I didn't tell you to do it so make sure that you go to render render setup and change your render settings to mental ray under assign renderer typically it starts with scan line um, but you won't even get the option for mental ray shadow map I don't believe if you have scan line selected so um, set this to mental ray and then that should bring up all of your options that you need over here also skylights don't work very well with sky, uh, scan lines so um, so mental ray is where it's at alright so we're gonna do another test render it should look a lot brighter now <clears throat> but it's gonna take a couple minutes to render so we're not gonna let it fully render but that's looking pretty good um, and essentially that's your entire setup for your lipid bilayer so there are some compositing techniques that we'll cover um, in another lesson but I want to go ahead and show you what the final uh, the final look will be once you fully render this out and expect that this is going to take some time to render um, there's a lot going on in the scene so I would allot at least a day for rendering about 10 seconds um, possibly even two days um, so it depends on your system um, and how um, how good your system is so I'm gonna go ahead and open up our test render here so this is fully rendered okay so it's looking pretty good we have some decent motion um, I did add a little bit of a particle effect in the background um, but uh, it you know this all looks pretty decent so um, so please let me know if there are any problems um, like I said we will do a compositing um, video it should be pretty short though this wasn't terribly complicated it has a, a z-depth map in it you can see some blurring in the background so I used a z-depth for that 
Um, and then I wasn't quite happy with the shade of tan that I had on the tails. So I also have a mask mat for the, um, for the tails. Um, and then just a light gradient in the background. Um, I rendered this out as a PNG. With a PNG, it doesn't render out the background. So then I was able to put in a four color gradient in After Effects to get this look in the background. So, um, so yeah, so that's it. This is a lipid bilayer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we have more to come. I'm going to try and do a bunch of videos on um, some medical animation and because uh, it's, it's not an area that a lot of people consider. Um, when they're thinking about animation, most people are thinking about video games and film, but this is definitely a valid area to use your animation skills.